But I think uh, we all know that it, it's in large part due to the, the bind that doctors were put in in 2020 and 2021 and 2022 and how doctors handled that. And they the majority of them handled that by basically giving up and rolling over and showing their belly to big pharma and, and big government and big tech and saying, uh, who am I? I'm just a little doctor. I, I don't, I shouldn't have a voice in this fight when they should have been very vocal and they should have been very outspoken, but they weren't. And so now the, the, the trust in the average doctor is at an all time low. And I think long-term that's going to be a good thing because patients need to think for themselves. You're a grown human. You've got the, the one of the biggest brains in the animal kingdom you need to use that. You need to think and you need to research yourself. Doctors are going to have to regain that trust if they ever do one patient at a time. And I think that's a good thing because what's going to come from this is actually a good, healthy doctor patient relationship like we used to have in the old days before big pharma basically mucked everything up. But the second thing that I love about this is that it proves, Carrie, beyond a shadow of a doubt that you don't have to be a doctor or a dietitian, or a PhD to remind a human being, hey, you're a human being, you should eat a proper human diet. I bet if you do that, your health will improve. You can be a truck driver, or a grocery sacker, or a hairdresser, or you can be unemployed. You can be a high school dropout. And if you've got a smartphone, you can get online and say, hey, I'm, I'm nobody. You don't have to trust me, but I did this, and it worked for me. Here's what I did. If you're suffering from the same kind of conditions that I'm suffering from, maybe you should try this way of eating for 90 days. I'm not trying to sell you any supplements. I'm not trying to sell you a course. I'm not trying to take your money. I'm not trying to trick you. I'm just a dude. I'm just a chick. And I ate this way and it improved my health. If you want to, here's what I did. You should give it a try. That's literally how humanity went from being just one animal to the apex animal on this planet is by one of us would figure something out. And then around the campfire that evening, we would tell all of our tribe members, hey, I think I figured something out. When I do this, this happens. And then the next day, everybody in the tribe would go out and they would experiment with that themselves. And, and if it was a good idea, it would catch on and it would become a meme in the Richard Dawkins fashion of a meme that, that is just information that's valuable and useful and rememberable. Everybody picks it up and it just becomes part of our belief structure. But if it was stupid, then bad things would happen when you tried that tribe member's advice. And we would all come back the next night at the campfire and say, that was stupid. That didn't work at all. And then we would all either kick that guy out or kill him or just ignore him from now on. But that's not what happens when somebody like you or the, the millions of people around the world who are like, hey, you should cut the carbs, get rid of the ultra processed stuff, stop eating grains, stop eating beans, stop eating vegetable seed oils. Well, what does that leave? It leaves lots of meat, eggs and seafood, plus or minus some veg, plus or minus some nuts and berries. That's a proper human diet. That's what that is. And when people say, okay, fine, every, I've tried everything else. I've tried everything my doctor recommended. None of that worked. Why wouldn't I try just eating real food in a particular fashion for 90 days? How, where's the downside of trying to eat food that humans have eaten for millions of years? I'll just try to eat that, only that for 90 days and see what happens. And then when they do that, it's like you've pulled the curtains back and they can actually see, or maybe they've escaped from Plato's cave and they're seeing reality now for the first time without looking at the cave wall that big pharma and big food are projecting these false images on. And they're like, holy crap, there's a real world out here where I'm not stuck in the recliner or stuck in bed or stuck in a mental institution. I can actually have fun with my life. I can be creative. I can be productive. I can be happy. I can, and, and so it makes sense biologically that when one of us sees another one of us who's really happy and really successful and just, they're just winning at life. And you don't have to be a millionaire to be winning at life, right? People who knew the old Carrie, who was depressed and angry and in the recliner and just wanted to take a nap. 
and now they see the new Carrie on YouTube. What the hell? Carrie, what are you doing? They can't help but be attracted to that. They can't help but want to know what Carrie did. How? How did you go from being that guy to being this guy? That's very seductive for, for humans, for people. We're super seduced by that. Like, what the heck is Carrie doing? And initially, we've been so trained by the, the Western model. Oh, he must have bought something. He must have. He must be in a multi-level marketing thing. He must. It must be something. Something I had to spend some money on or spend some effort. Well, no, actually, no, it's none of that. You don't have to spend a penny. You can just watch my free video and then just go eat meat. That's as right. simple as it right. gets. And people, when they first hear that, they're like, ah, there's got to be a catch, kind of like you were. Like, ah, there's got to be a catch. You must be trying to sell me something. But when it becomes obvious, no, he's not trying to sell you anything. Just try it for 90 days. Just shut up and try it. Man, that's that's the simplest message in the world. Right. Yeah, I don't believe there's a bigger calling, too, on this planet than to help fellow man out. And there's nothing more rewarding than it either. And the big epiphany that I had later in my carnivore journey was, you know, we hear Dr. Barry, you talking and other doctors and experts. And sometimes we talk about metabolism, mitochondria, and some of these things are like big words. But really, all I did with carnivore was return to what is most natural for humans, given the circumstances we have right now. I believe that's just eating meat. And I don't a, know how anybody could argue. Way to put it. I love how you put that. Return to the, the doing the closest you can do in our current modern society to what we did more than 15,000 years ago. That's exactly perfectly stated because that if you take each word of what you said literally and use the definition that the average person would apply to each word you just used in that statement, then everything makes sense. Yeah, it's perfect. Right. So one of the most incredible things that happened for me besides overcoming depression, losing all the weight was uh, I had congestive heart failure. I had a TIA mini stroke years ago. My ejection fraction was 44. I was dizzy. I was fatigued. About a year into carnivore, I went to the doctor just to get a test. Nothing wrong with me. I'm like, I think I reversed this thing. They told me it was chronic. But long story short, my, my congestive heart failure, ejection fraction 44, completely normal after one year on carnivore to 65. And I had a lifelong irregular heartbeat since birth. For 43 years, I probably wore two dozen heart monitors, Holter monitors throughout my life. Highly erratic. It's completely normal on carnivore. I still can't wrap my brain around that. I, we interviewed Dr. Philip Ovedia for the documentary on that. Um, it's amazing what will heal when you just return to what is natural. Are there any examples or patients or people you've worked with where you've had just like this is this is kind of crazy or that, that really stand out to you? Yeah, the thing that really stands out to me <clears throat> is the mental health healing that can happen when you eliminate enough unnatural substances from the human diet. And when you eliminate uh, all the unnatural foods that we didn't eat more than 15,000 years ago. Uh, I'm a family physician. I, I kind of went to medical school and through residency with kind of a surgery mindset, uh, procedure heavy, that kind of thing. I was never really into mental health. Uh, I, I had many patients who had the diagnosis of depression, anxiety, OCD, ADHD, and worse. But that was never really the thing I was most interested in. And I think Western the kind of the Western paradigm and Western medicine has kind of trained every, all of us to think that the brain and the mind especially is somehow different and, and separate from the human body. And so you need psychotherapy or you need psychotropics for the brain. The brain's different. No, the brain is just like the rest of your body. Your brain is made of meat. It's made of fat. It's made of cholesterol. It is it is a part of your body. Your mind comes from your brain and your brain is part of your body. And so it, I should have understood intuitively that mental health would improve if you improved your diet. But that didn't occur to me, especially early in this journey that I was like, if anybody had said five years ago, carnivore diet is going to be revolutionary when it comes to mental health. Uh, meat heavy, keto, High fat carnivore that is going to literally cure mental health diseases. I would have been like, no, 
that's that's a pipe dream. That's not going to happen. But now you and I both are faced with tens of thousands of people who many of whom used to be institutionalized. They used to be effectively <clears throat> pharmaceutically lobotomized by all the medications they were on. And now I just met a lady. Her name is Valerie. We follow each other on X on Twitter. And she, I mean, her, her mental health, it was just a disaster until she found the carnivore diet. And I just met her in person at a, at a keto conference in Louisville, Kentucky. Ebullient, effervescent, raring to go, just loving life. And, and if, if, if you had told her 10 years ago, one day you're going to act like this, she would have thought you were nuts. She would have thought you were the crazy one. She's like, no, there's no, I'll never do that. I can, I, I could, I could never do that. And now she does it on a daily basis and loves it and loves her life. If you'd have told me that was possible, I'd have been like, nah, I think keto and carnivore will probably help a lot of things, but mental health, come on. I don't think that's going to happen. But now I'm seeing it over and over and over ad infinitum. Yeah, yeah. Mental health absolutely improves on a proper human diet. That's the thing that's it still blows me away. And, you know, I've read the books by Dr. Georgia Eden, and Dr. Chris Palmer. I've read all the research about keto and mental health and, and now increasingly carnivore mental health. But just seeing tens of thousands of people in person, in real life, on social media, who are like, I couldn't even, I couldn't even function in regular society. But now after carnivore, I've got a job. I've got a, I've got a fiance. I'm, I'm, you know, I it just, it's just, it's, it, it feels miraculous. It feels like magic, but it's not magic. It's physiology. The brain it, it follows all the laws of physiology that the rest of your body follows. And if you eat a proper human diet that has all the nutrition your brain needs, which many plant-based diets do not have, and it's uninflammatory enough, your mental health is going to improve to some degree. In some cases, it's going to improve completely. Blows me I away. love that answer. That's the reason I decided to do the documentary. It was all mental health, depression, anxiety, and then I started seeing all of these other issues. And I have heard so many stories from individuals, particularly because I talk a lot about mental health, depression, anxiety, but people with bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, like things that you would never imagine. And for me, I was hopelessly depressed for most of my adult life. I would have given anything. I, I used to say this, Dr. Berry, I was like, if I could just be normal like that person, just at a baseline. But the truth is, and I'm not hyping this up. This is the absolute truth. I am not at a baseline. I am on the opposite end of the spectrum of hopeless depression. I'm full yep. of joy and gratitude. I'm thankful. Like I love life. I really, I want for nothing um, other than to get this word out to help more people. But, um, and I hear this over and over again from so many people. It's just amazing. Besides the depression and anxiety, the big realization I had with the documentary too is I just feel like the majority of the world, even those that aren't in a deep depression or anxiety, they have this brain fog that's a mild impairment where they just get home mm. and they plop down on the couch and they do the bare minimum and they're just getting along and they're not living and they don't know what they don't know. They think they have brain fog. They don't realize how bad it is, but they're, they're not going after their goals and dreams and they're not getting outside and kicking the soccer ball around with their kid because they're too fatigued and too tired. And I think that's a huge tragedy that a lot of people don't, don't realize. And yeah. another reason we're pretty passionate about doing this documentary. So. And here's another thing, Kerry, and this infuriates me. <clears throat> this is another thing that big medicine and big pharma are absolutely guilty of and should be held accountable for. And they, what it is, is they basically trained two or three generations of humans to give up. Because if you give somebody a false solution to a problem, you're like, oh, Kerry, you're on the couch, you're depressed. Here, try a plant-based diet. It's going to fix that. And you're like, well, crap. Okay, I'll try it. And it doesn't fix it. You understand that that's, tra that's training you that nothing's going to work. That yeah. What's the ultimate message? There is no hope. You're just screwed. That's the, that's the final take-home message that there are millions of people right now on the couch, in the recliner, 
on the floor crying in an institution like there's no hope for me. I'm I am hopeless. That you have been you have been misinformed. There is hope. There absolutely is hope. But you, you can imagine you from 10 years ago, Carrie, if you heard me say that, you'd be like, no, I've tried it all. I've done it all. I've tried every pill at the pharmacy. I've tried all the diet. No, there's no hope for me. And so a lot of people have been so trained that they're almost hope averse. They're like anti-hope, like, no, he's he's a shyster. He's a he's a charlatan. He's trying to trick me there. I know, I know there's no hope. I've tried it all. There's no hope. That's the thing that really infuriates me beyond anything else is that we as mainstream medicine, allopathic medicine, uh, mainstream media, big pharma, big food, we've trained people. There's not a damn thing you can do. Just enjoy the junk food and just take your pills and just try to get along and be along and be happy that it, it could be worse. You know, that's what most people, they believe that. They have been trained to believe that in their heart of hearts deep in their private inner sanctum, they believe there's no hope. This is as good as it gets. And that is false. That is not true. You have been improperly trained. You've been propagandized to believe that what you're suffering with right now is as good as it's going to get. That is false. That is not true. And that's why I'll never shut up trying to teach people. Just in my, my plea to that person I was just talking about and talking to is, just try it for 90 days. I'm not going to make a penny if you try it. You're not going to lose a penny if you try it. Just try it for 90 days. And then if I'm wrong, you can denigrate me for the rest of your life and, and talk about what a hack I was and what a what a quack I was. But just try it for 90 days. That's all I want you to do. Yeah. That's so powerful. It's so true. It's 100% true. Everything you just said there for me. It's there's something wrong with my brain. There's it's just me. It's genetics. There's something wrong with me. And my cousin right now, uh, type two diabetic, he believes there's something wrong with his genetics, not the fact that he's consuming excess carbohydrates. Literally a week ago, he had his leg amputated at the knee, started with his foot and he just kept eating these things because he's like, it's just there's nothing I can do about it. Check my uh, glucose numbers, but I'm just going to keep doing it. And he's the same way. He thinks it's, it's something wrong with him. So, uh, I really appreciate you coming on here, Dr. Barry. I'm just looking at the time here. I just want to thank you so much. This has been great. You're doing so much great work.